Hello and welcome. Thank you everyone for joining today's webinar session titled Cisco Hyperflex with Nixenta Software-Based SMB File Services. This is Don Lopes and I'm really excited to have everyone here join, join our webinar. This is something uh, we've been working on close with the Cisco team for, for quite some time and, and just announced a, a week or so back and are, are really excited to share more with the audience here what we've been working on and uh, you know all, all the good details behind the solution we're offering together. Uh, before, before we jump into the webinar today, I want to go through some brief housekeeping items. Uh, first reminder or heads up that we have muted all of your lines uh, just to avoid background noise and uh, make sure our, our, our recording for future, uh, future attendees in use is clean and crisp. But please try to, to use the, uh, the chat feature there in the navigation bar. It, it uh, makes it as inter interactive as we can be, and, and we'll do a, a good job of infusing those, those questions in as we go. Uh, so that's right there in the, the sidebar. You should be able to hit chat, enter your questions, and we'll, we'll bring those into the session. Um, or if, if we're not able to work them right into the webinar, we're going to have a good amount of time to go through Q&A, so we should have uh, the ability to answer almost all the questions there. Um, the, the only other you know, heads up reminder that you know, is normal a question that we get quite often is, uh, will I receive the, the recording and slides? Yes, we'll, we'll get you a follow up within 24 hours. So uh, please look forward to that uh, and, and share that with your, with your colleagues. Uh, with that, I'm, I'm going to uh, really turn it over to, to our speakers here and have Aravind and Michael introduce yourselves. So Aravind, if you don't mind, maybe going first. Hey, uh, thanks, Don, for the intro. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Aravind. I'm a product manager on, on the Cisco Hyperflex uh, product, and uh, my entire career and background has been in enterprise storage. I look forward to walking you over the joint solution that we have developed with Nexenta for our file services piece. So. Wonderful, thanks, Aravin. Michael? Uh, thanks, appreciate it. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited to be here with Aravin to do this today. So uh, for those of you who don't, uh, I'm introducing here, um, my name is Mike Letcher and I'm our Field Chief Technology Officer at Nexenta. I've been here for about seven years and have actually worked through a lot of the processing and the testing uh, with Cisco, uh, as well as some of the VMware integrations things that we'll get into as we go along the way. So uh, looking forward to giving everybody a little more information on this new release. Great, guys. Thanks for the introduction. So with that, as, as uh, Ervin and Mike mentioned, you know, we're going to review uh, high level each of the different kind of technologies. We're going to get into the solutions themselves, uh, get into some of the certification, and, and talk about some of the resources and uh, available items. Uh, for you to learn more. So uh, really, really excited. And with that, I, I'm going to turn it over to Aravind to, to get us started. Hey, uh, everyone. So I was going to start with a brief intro of uh, Cisco Hyperflex. And uh, so uh, Hyperflex is Cisco's entry in the hyperconverged infrastructure space. So what Cisco did was it tried to look at the first generation hyperconverged vendors. It saw a couple of areas where it could potentially uh, build on the enhancements of the hyperconverged uh, industry. And it kind of decided to go with an approach where they would integrate the network also into the hyperconverged stack, right? So traditionally, when hyperconvergence started, it was only the uh, compute and the storage that were bundled together, but then with Hyperflex, you now have the entire network or the fabric interconnects, which kind of create its own storage network bundled together within the hyperconverged infrastructure too. So this is built on top of the uh, industry leading uh, UCS or uh, the UCS uh, foundations, which is uh, kind of defined or being the benchmark for, uh, I would say, integrating compute and network together. And with the UCS framework, Cisco already has kind of uh, defined uh, reusable templates, which can be used to instantly uh, stand up servers. And the Cisco uh, UCS framework 
has also, I would say, provided a single point of management for, for both your network and your compute, right? So uh, Hyperflex is built on top of this building block and on, on top of this, the storage stack that Hyperflex has is called the Hyperflex data platform. So this is again uh, a storage stack that has been uh, built entirely for hyperconvergence. So it is the number one performing uh, uh, storage stack in the hyperconverged space. So it has a bunch of enterprise grade uh, goodness in it. It has uh, dedupe and compression by default. It has data resiliency built into it. So all this along with the flexibility to do the management the way you want, right? So with that, I mean, like uh, you have your cloud-based uh, management tools. Uh, we have a couple of tools for that called uh, Cisco Intersight, wherein you can uh, remotely uh, deploy and then remotely manage your hyperflex systems from anywhere, be it your systems in the data center or your remote locations. And then with respect to uh, the flexibility to move your workloads to, right? So we have a, a couple of tools which uh, let you uh, move your, I would say, your workloads between your data center and cloud too, uh, with respect to the Cisco Cloud Center. And then with, uh, again, on the Cisco Workload Optimization Manager, we have uh, the intelligence to uh, let you pick which workloads that you want to run on-prem and then which workloads that you want on the cloud, right? So all these together, make for a comprehensive hyperconvergence solution, which is industry leading in a couple of different aspects. Uh, so Don, if you want to go to the, yeah. So uh, again, as I talked about, we are the number one uh, performing hyperconverged vendor. Uh, we have a, a third party report, which we routinely uh, keep, uh, I mean, which uh, is released every year and we keep coming out on top in that. And then apart from that, we have, as I was talking about the maintenance uh, uh, simplicity, right? We have upgrades across the entire stack. In the sense, you can upgrade your uh, hypervisor, you can upgrade your server firmware, you can upgrade your storage stack, uh, all of these in a single click or within a single downtime, uh, if you may. And one of the things that I wanted to also touch upon was uh, hyperconvergence is built on simplicity, right? But then Hyperflex takes it to the next level with respect to the initial installation too. So we have uh, integrated the network also into the initial installation. And what I mean by that is uh, we have, uh, I would say, provided uh, the fabric interconnects, which we configure uh, with the QS settings uh, at the time of deployment too, which uh, again, means that you have a dedicated network for your uh, storage traffic. And on top of that, we do a uh, factory installation of the uh, server uh, firmware too. And then uh, again, the server profiles are also created during the installation, uh, the server templates. So what this means from an end customer uh, deployment is, the deployment takes around 45 minutes to one hour for a, a three node system that we uh, usually sell. So with respect to that, again, we are one of the leaders with respect to uh, simplifying the initial deployment and also the scaling pieces afterwards. So with respect to uh, scaling too, our uh, storage stack is built for a scale out model wherein the addition of new nodes to the system does not result in any decrease in uh, performance uh, at all. So we are able to leverage uh, every uh, new node that's added in the sense you will be uh, without the need to have uh, more clothes more to new node, right? The storage stack is built to take advantage of every new node that's added without any uh, moving off the workloads around for that. And again, uh, we do have a couple of other industry leading, uh, I would say advantages. We were the first to come out with the compute only nodes for certain workloads. Uh, you do not need a node which has both uh, storage and compute, right? You just need compute, say for like a VDA workload, typically we find that you run out of uh, compute first before capacity. So with Hyperflex, you have the ability to add compute only nodes. And then again, you can, uh, again, with respect to scalability and integrating into your existing environment, right? You can use your existing uh, arrays to actually feed into Hyperflex too. So uh, with this, we kind of have around uh, 3000 customers uh, so far, uh, wherein uh, we uh, within the last two years, this has been like a rapid increase. And uh, we have a variety of customers running uh, different workloads right from uh, VDI and uh, 
I would say like probably the enterprise applications are uh, done if you want to move on to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, again, we uh, hyperconvergence started with initially running uh, VDI workloads and virtual server workloads, right? But then for uh, Hyperflex, what customers found was they could leverage the performance of Hyperflex to run other workloads too. Uh, by other workloads, I mean more uh, enterprise workloads and more, I would say, critical workloads such as uh, databases, uh, EMR systems, um, your uh, ERP, your SAP HANAs, and your Oracle business suites, right? So uh, Hyperflex has grown to accommodate a wide variety of workloads, and we keep continuing to add more workloads on top of this. Uh, so uh, with the workloads too, right? Again, you would need the flexibility to run them as a virtual machine or as a container, right? So with Hyperflex, you have a platform which lets you do both. Um, in the sense that you can uh, use, uh, we have integrations with uh, Kubernetes where you can use Hyperflex as the persistent storage tire for your containers. And then you have the ability to move the containers to either run on-prem in on, on Hyperflex or to the cloud too. And similarly, we are, uh, as a part of enabling more workloads, we have a bunch of AML workloads planned uh, based on the new uh, GPUs that we are supporting. And again, with respect to management too, uh, we talked about how there is a variety of integrations which lets you have a single pane of management for your uh, servers, uh, your compute and uh, storage and the network together, right? And along with that, you have the intelligence to figure out uh, which lo workload to run in which particular environment too. So uh, again, as a part of enabling multiple uh, workloads. Uh, we wanted to, uh, I would say, transition to enabling file services workloads on Hyperflex too. Uh, Don, if you want to go. Yes, so uh, again, with respect to hyperconvergence, right? We understand the value proposition of hyperconvergence, and then as a part of enabling more and more enterprise workloads on Hyperflex, uh, we wanted to uh, provide uh, our customers with uh, I would say an ability to consume file shares or file services on Hyperflex. The uh, reason being uh, today when customers actually buy a, a VDI solution, right? Uh, they run their uh, VDI virtual machines or desktops on uh, Hyperflex and then they traditionally use a third party storage array to run their uh, file shares or uh, their file services, right? So uh, this is, I mean, this is again feedback coming from the field and our customers that, hey, uh, we have Hyperflex, which again, we like the performance benefits and we like all the goodness that comes with it. But then it is, I mean, it is something that we would like to use for uh, running file services too. So to kind of enable that workloads, we wanted to come up with a solution that would let users uh, consume SIFS SMB shares, typically for VDI user home directories and uh, user profiles so that this, uh, I would say, the dependency on an external storage array is reduced, and these workloads can continue running on Hyperflex itself. So I think with that being said, uh, I would uh, ask uh, Mike to jump in on the uh, rest of the solution. Appreciate that. Thanks, Arvind. That was a great intro into to Hyperflex and kind of where we're, what we're looking to, to add on to it. Uh, so. I think as a lot of you may be aware, um, the really the concept behind this is utilizing our Nexenta store VSA for the file services on top of Hyperflex. So we're going to deploy as a traditional VM uh, on top and utilizing that storage from the Hyperflex underneath. Now, what that really is going to give you is uh, we mentioned in VDI initially, and that's really one of the big use cases that we've done the testing on initially, and we'll get to that in a little bit on some of the testing, but whether it's for VDI or uh, for those home directories and, and user directories and profiles, uh, or even some robo or departmental storage, it gives you the option to have now file services uh, on a Hyperflex environment that may be sitting out at a branch office, it may be the core for your VDI environment, uh, but giving that added onto it without having to go purchase an additional third-party array. Now, a lot of the reaction to that becomes, well, why would I want that third-party array uh, what's what am I getting with that? On top of these use cases, now I can start looking at what do I get with adding Nexenta VSA. You get that full enterprise feature set uh, for a NAS capability. So whether that you want Active Directory integration 
or you're looking at something that ties into your antivirus package potentially, uh, or even things like being able to do quick file recovery. There's a lot of different things that are added there. You're also now leveraging your existing investment in your infrastructure. So you already have this hyperflex there. Uh, potentially, maybe you do need the compute a lot of times. Maybe there's storage remaining uh, that you want to be able to utilize that extra storage and get the best use of your hardware. That's where an extension store VSA can take that extra hardware, really leverage what's already there without additional investment. Uh, again, with no added hardware cost onto that. So you're not adding in an additional filer for power, for cooling, for management, and another management stack. You've already got your management stack within uh, for your Hyperflex environment. You've already got your VMware management stack. Now you can manage all of the Nexenta Store VSA straight from things like vCenter to get you a no added hardware benefit to this on a true software basis to get you the file services. And all of that gets wrapped around having a, a common management platform again. So whether it is that you use vCenter to manage most of your stuff, you can utilize that. Whether you're API driven, you can always make the API calls to both of the solutions and manage both the Hyperflex or the VSA if you're looking at for uh, doing more prescriptive and scripting based integration. So there's a lot of different places, but you can all really truly centralize that and not have to learn and, and find another management stack that you're going to have to learn. So as I kind of dig into it, what does that really mean? So what I mentioned the enterprise feature set, what do you get with Nixenta Store for VSA? Now, it's running as a VM. And a lot of times people say, well, if I just have a VM, what happens if my ASX code goes down? Well, obviously you've got things like VMware AHA that will fail over, but there could be a pretty significant time before all your services come back up. You've got a rather utilized ESX environment uh, for your, your vSphere setup. It's going to take a bit before all the machines reload, before they recognize it, before you get services back out. And that's where we come in with our addition with our HA environment. So we do provide uh, an HA clustering environment where we have two VSAs on top of that Hyperflex that really act as a backup for each other. So they can both be presenting data at the same time, but if you lose the host it's sitting on, it will, within a very short period of time, depending on workload, obviously, it could be under a minute, could be under two minutes, uh, it could fail over to give you that capability. So from that, we actually take the initial VMDK uh, that are being presented by Hyperflex. We grab those. You've already got the resiliency of the physical storage with your Hyperflex environment. So we're normally just going to stripe across that. There's no reason to add the additional layer on top of that uh, for added uh, data resiliency. You can just take that storage already has the physical resiliency, and now you're going to get that HA resiliency as well. Then you're going to manage that through that same common platform I mentioned, whether it's the vCenter plugin or whether you want to utilize our UI to be able to get things like analytics off the file systems uh, and be able to manage it even more in depth. So you have a lot of different options on that. Now, presenting out from there, you do get that full NFS and SMB capability. Now, on those, you can either replicate uh, utilizing the Hyperflex. So if it's full VM replication, that's a great place to do it. You take the, the Hyperflex, take your VM, replicate out to another site. Uh, maybe you only need a small portion. You can utilize that with that replication. Maybe it's just one department's file system that you need to replicate. Now you can get down into that much more granular level. Now, all of our replication is actually based on a snapshot technology. Now, I'm going to come back to that, but remember that you now have the capability to do your traditional full VM snapshots or at the file system level, so we can really do a lot more for the end user when it comes to their files and make it easier for the end user to be able to access and manage their own data without the additional help from a IT staff. Now, going into what really is composed into that SMB stack, you do get the capability to do traditional SMB 2 and 3 uh, if you needed 3 for different things and access from some different Microsoft applications that do perform better with SMB 3, as well as things like that Active Directory integration, quota when you're looking at a VDI environment, and home directories. Quota can be very important. Then, of course, being able to make sure that you're protected for the event of viruses and things like that. I think having all that, it really gives you a lot more capability. And the one thing to, to call out here is this is not just another version of Samba. I know people have looked at where they've got a Linux box that they've deployed Samba on 
in the past, and it, it, they get a mixed reaction. It doesn't always get the performance of what they're looking for. Uh, this is going to give you that very robust Microsoft style experience uh, utilizing our SMB stack. So I had mentioned on how you're going to manage that and kind of how your deployment options come. So really there's a couple different deployment options. You can do either just a single VSA, you can do the dual VSAs in that HA environment we talked about, and then you can even replicate this solution out uh, to be able to keep some copies of that out into our AWS Nextenta cloud solution if you want it, and vice versa. All of this gets managed with a single console and a single pane of glass for the management. But that's great with all of that for what we do for Nextenta, but you guys came to see how do we really, what do we do with Hyperflex? And I think this is where now, when we go into this next slide, Arvin and I can kind of bounce off of this a bit uh, with some of the testing, the things we've done uh, to really make this work with the Hyperflex. So it really was everything from testing out that integration with Active Directory, uh, testing the user quotas, the, the capability. Uh, and I mentioned the snapshot earlier, and that's where this version fallback capability and the ability for a end user now has an SMB share. They're going to look at their files. All they have to do, as long as you've taken the snapshots with the Nextenta Store VSA, is go to right click on that file directory and go to previous versions. And they will see all the snapshots that you as an administrator might have taken or the IT staff that has taken now so that your end user has full capability to go back a couple versions without extra interaction. And I think combining that with the HA, uh, yeah, I, I think, think this is what talk about. That's a, a big piece, yeah? Oh yeah, HA was something that we were really impressed with. And uh, one of the reasons that we actually wanted to go into a solution with Nextenta was it's on top of its uh, SMB stack, uh, its ability to have a HA solution, which was, I would say, far better compared to what native VMware HA would provide, right? We observed, I would say, RTO in the matter of seconds, and we did a bunch of tests for this, uh, which we'll go over probably in the next slide. But then that's something that's uh, really resonated with us, and that's a ask from our customers too. In the sense, they wanted a HA solution uh, for uh, providing file services and Nextenta fit the bill perfectly there. Yeah, I, I know when I did some of the testing in our lab before, as we were just starting to build this up on it, when we did some just standard VMware HA testing, it was 15, 17 minutes almost by the time everything was back up. On a reasonably used kind of production type environment, when you just had a single ESX host failure, but utilizing the RHA, we were able to do that within minutes, um, within seconds even in some environments, depending on load. So I think that combined with the ability to really unify that storage across utilizing the Hyperflex as well as ours. And again, uh, with respect to uh, trying to get the uh, stats on uh, utilization, right? So the uh, Nexenta management tool does provide, I would say, easy metrics on uh, which files, uh, which folders are being accessed and which users are the ones which are consuming it so that uh, if need be, you can uh, uh, like accommodate for, uh, I would say, more capacity for that particular user or a particular uh, share event, right? So Arvind, I know we've talked a little bit about kind of some of the integration and testing we've been doing. I think if we go to the, the next slide here, uh, I'm sure one of the things that our custom, the customers we're talking to here, this is probably a, a big portion that they need to be able to validate. So. Uh, yeah, so before that, like, uh, if there are any questions on uh, the line, like, uh, we can probably uh, answer that too. Uh, in a sense, uh, I mean, we do want to make it an interactive session. So if you have any questions on things that you heard so far, uh, we can quickly tackle that uh, too. I mean, the, the, the only question that, that came in was uh, related to management, right? So Mike talked a little bit about uh, the abilities through, through VMware. You talked a little bit about through some of the tools in which Cisco um, uh -huh. has. Um, can, can you kind of touch on where where we're at today and, and where things are going? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, with respect to uh, management today, right? Uh, so we, for uh, Cisco, we have uh, Cisco Intersight, which lets you manage uh, your uh, Hypertex uh, clusters, your UCS servers, and your Fabric Interconnects all from a single management plane. But then uh, going forward in the future, we are going to have a tighter integration where uh, we will be able to uh, deploy and uh, potentially manage the file shares from our common management tool too. So I think that's something uh, that we are planning for to do in the future. Uh, so I think once we have, uh, I would say, uh, customers 
who are extremely happy with the solution, which I think is definitely happening in the future. So uh, our management roadmap is going to include, uh, I would say, more, uh, more tighter integration uh, between uh, Next Center and Hyperflex. So. Great, thanks, Aaron. And uh, so jumping on the uh, testing uh, piece, right? So uh, with respect to the test that we did, so we uh, used, uh, I would say, the more uh, recent versions of both uh, Hyperflex and Next Center that you can find here. But then uh, we also try to simulate a VDI uh, workload uh, for this particular test. And uh, by this, I mean not a, a simple VDI workload, but then a VDI workload which kind of recreates the uh, complete user profiles, uh, the storage of even the uh, OS, and also the uh, high intensity knowledge workers who kind of, uh, I would say, are the powered users to for a VDI uh, environment, right? So even on top of all this, uh, Next Center performed really well. And then uh, they had, I would say, uh, linear scalability where as you keep increasing the uh, load, uh, the performance also scales uh, along with that. And uh, again, the I would say one of the uh, parts which definitely impressed us was the HAPs, wherein uh, we simulated both uh, a, a full, uh, like a disk failure, a full single node failure, and then uh, network failures too. And the HA solution was robust enough to actually recover from all of those uh, within, I would say, uh, a much shorter time window compared to uh, other HA solutions like uh, VMware HA. And uh, uh, Mike, do you want to touch upon the uh, management piece? I know you have a, a couple of uh, uh, tips or uh, quick installation steps for management and, uh, and the installation piece, yeah, I think, which I think was that something that we found really useful too. Yeah, I agree. I think it was one of the things that as once we started working with you guys on, on showing you how quick the deployment was. So I think it's for those who are on the phone that are, are curious as to, okay, this is, this sounds good, but what, what do we do to deploy it? How do we do that? Um, I think that's something that you guys found very helpful. Um, and it's a very easy process, really. It's a, we, we list this kind of our, our three step process on it. And that includes getting all the way through to it. So it does deploy as a VMware OVA. So for those of you who are familiar with vCenter on it, it's as simple as right clicking on a cluster saying deploy the OVA and dropping a URL in. Uh, once you've done that, it walks through. You can either do that uh, with the, a full production copy or even just to test it out uh, in your VMware environment today uh, to know that or your Hyperflex environment so that you could do a test on it for, for 45 days and deploy that out. Now, this second step, once you've deployed it, the VM comes up, you power on the VM, uh, you literally run two commands. There's one that system set up, sets things like IP addresses, passwords, uh, things like NTP servers and all that type of stuff. Uh, and then you simply add a license key. Uh, so you just do a, a license activate with a, with a license key, whether it's a, a trial or permanent license, and you are up and running and ready to go. Now, whether you deploy Next Center Fusion to do the management there, whether you do the vCenter plugin, any of these options are available. But you can simply then just create, start creating file systems and, and shares. And all of this can be done in just a few minutes. Um, I think the longest part of this is normally the download of the OVA uh, into vCenter. It is the time consuming part, but getting it up and getting it running, much like you talked about on Hyperflex on the simplicity of deployment and being able to deploy uh, a three node cluster in 45 minutes. Uh, the goal here is that you get a brand new three node cluster and you want to get from the point where you not only get that cluster up, but you're all the way through presenting file shares. And we want you to be able to do that in just over an hour. Uh, so as long as you're not running over a 56K modem, because if that's the case, I have no control over it. Uh, if you're running over a standard connection, uh, that shouldn't be a problem at all. And you can really get this deployed uh, pretty quickly and have it nice and simplistic and, and easy to open. Uh, and with that though, that OVA, is really built to give you an idea of how do you want to configure it? What kind of scale are you trying to get to? Uh, we built that as a, a custom OVA to give you questions throughout the process. Uh, and if we go over to the next slide, it gives an idea of kind of those different spaces uh, that you can do it on. Whether you choose a robust, small, medium, or large environment, you can now deploy that out. We will automatically set all of the things like CPU and memory uh, we will even go to a point of building out those VMDKs so that we can grab the storage from the Hyperflex, build that all that is ready to go for you by the time it is ready to power on. 
So that gives us a bunch of different ranges. And it, it starts from that branch office, just standalone, single VSA. Um, maybe it's a smaller use case on it. Uh, going into up even to some of the larger ones and into the thousands of workers, uh, the hundreds and thousands of whether it be your traditional task workers, all the way through those really heavy home directory hitters that are really actively using it. And when you get into that small, medium, large type size, now is when you start adding the capability of a second VSA and getting that uh, HA capability again. Uh, I know we've been focusing on that a lot. I think it is something that really gives a true differentiator to give you a lot of file services capability uh, over top of the Hyperflex that you're not seeing on a lot of the other hyper-converged products on the market uh, with that capability to truly do a good HA-based and enterprise-level file services on top of a Hyperflex environment. Now, all of that's great, but you also still need to be able to pick up the phone and have a support call. And I think that always comes up on, on how a partnership that like this works for support. And I think, Arvin, I'm going to let you hit on the support, on the way that you support Hyperflex first before I, I go into the, the add-on of, of what we're doing today on the next Center Store VSA. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, sure, Mike. So with respect to support for Hyperflex, right? So most of you will be familiar with uh, Cisco TAC. So Cisco TAC is known uh, for providing unmatched support to customers, and that's the same support organization that's going to be responsible for Hyperflex too, in the sense the uh, the FIs, the UCS servers, and the Hyperflex data platform are all supported by uh, Cisco TAC. So we do have, <clears throat> on top of the existing uh, TAC uh, goodness that you get with respect to being available in uh, like around 20, close to 20 languages and 180 countries, we also have some integrations specifically for Hyperflex too, wherein uh, we have a certain events for which you will auto, like you will automatically create support tickets uh, for the customer. So when the customer calls about that issue, there's already a support ticket available, and then uh, uh, the support engineers can directly work on troubleshooting the customer's issue. Like they're probably already working on troubleshooting the customer's issue, right? So we did actually add on to that very recently, wherein we re uh, released a functionality where the support logs will also be uploaded automatically from the customer's environment uh, to that particular case too. So when that happens, right? So by the time a customer calls in, we already have the case open, we already have the logs to troubleshoot, and we are in the process of troubleshooting and solving the uh, customer's case. So in certain scenarios, we have had cases which got opened, and by the time the customer made a phone call, they were already like halfway uh, troubleshooted and root cost, and by the end of like around even 45 to 40 minutes to one hour, the whole case had a resolution. And that resolution can be as simple as, hey, you would need to have uh, some kind of a firmware update or an upgrade. And then uh, we kind of have uh, took that feedback uh, to the next uh, step to wherein we make these recommendations automatically too. So we have, I would say, uh, with respect to our uh, cloud-based uh, management tool, an inventory of uh, the customers, uh, I would say, the different uh, systems, right? So. Uh, we can uh, try to figure out what are all the uh, Hyperflex clusters that are prone to, uh, I would say, uh, uh, a signature, uh, a security check, or which are prone to uh, performance uh, improvements, I mean, which are prone to performance uh, degradation, and we can come up with uh, a suggestion based on ways to fix them, right? So this would automatically be provided to the customer, wherein we would let them know that, hey, this particular system is going to suffer from this particular problem. And as a part of that, you, you can fix this by going to this particular uh, release or particular version, or this is the fix that you need to do for this. So all of this process becomes automated. And uh, we do have some prediction tools too, which are, uh, going to be built in to Hyperflex, wherein we'll be able to plan for your capacity. We'll be able to uh, provide you with uh, recommendations on when do you need to add more nodes, when do you need to add more disks, and along with uh, the ability for a 24-7 support to call TAC, I think this makes for a very comprehensive support solution. Yeah, and I think, Arvin, a lot of those those pieces, it's nice because there are some integrations of things that we do similarly as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so as we've been building that out, if, if we find that it is a, a file services issue specifically, uh, we also have our, our same 24-7 uh, Follow the Sun support 
uh, for it. We also do send things like a, a weekly report of kind of what's going on with the hardware. Is it good? We obviously don't do anything with your data. We just want to make sure, similar to Hyperflex, that all the hardware is running well. That doesn't change in a virtual environment. We still want to be able to make sure that everything is functional. We don't see any alerts. We don't see things like major issues on capacity or on uh, device failures that are coming up. So we have a similar report back on that. And that really, the way we look at it is we really try to go from all the way from the pre-sales environment when you're first starting to look at something and gain you support on this all the way through that implementation and then into any engagement if you want to need maybe additional training on things like integration with Active Directory uh, or you have something that you, you just want to have a little more training for your team so they know how to use the, the UI well or uh, work with them on how to integrate even more with vCenter, things like that. Uh, all the way through into a standard customer portal that I think most people are used to. So I think the, the integration of it really gives a nice tight support story uh, between the two products. And I think that's pretty evident in some of the resources uh, when we, we jump onto kind of what can, what can we talk about? What can you guys get today uh, as end users? And we've actually just, with the release, there's two documents out on the Nexenta website today that you can go grab. First, just being a, a quick uh, solution brief, just that overview so you know what you're looking at. If you're watching this today and you want to go talk to your team about it, maybe grab the solution brief and, and send it along to them as well as more of a deep dive on a white paper scenario that we did jointly mm -hmm. to be able and to deploy this. So like for more details on uh, best practices or uh, configurations uh, that we have tested, right? So uh, specifically to the SMB uh, shares solution that we tested, you can find uh, the test results, our uh, the configuration that we use for the test, and then how you can uh, recreate uh, a similar setup on your end too, right? So all of that can be found in the uh, white paper. Yeah, I think that's key for seeing kind of what the best setup is uh, of the, the pieces to know, okay, it was this size, it was this much, this is where the, the memory played out, this is where the bottlenecks were. I think that's something a lot of people don't get to see, and that was detailed well in the white paper uh, with that testing. So I think that's definitely a, a big, Thing. If somebody's really looking to dive into this, they can get that deep dive through the white paper uh, on it right away, that, and that is available today. So that's all well and good, but I think the key that everyone wants to know is, okay, so how do I get this? Uh, and now you can either simply send an email over to uh, Cisco underscore sales at Nexenta, and we'll get you both the, the pricing or where to purchase, as well as how to build up a proof of concept on this. Uh, if you want to go try out the OVA today uh, and just want to get that, that software trial, you have your Hyperflex already, uh, and you're realizing you're missing this component, uh, and you want to add that in, you can go to nextcenter.com slash downloads and grab the OVA, uh, as well as a trial license, and get it tested. Uh, and we'd be, we're looking forward to having uh, some more conversations on how this fits into your environments that you either already have uh, Hyperflex, or as Arvin and I have talked about, that it's a new deployment, and we want to get it out there quickly, and you're ready for that rapid deployment and kind of moving your data center to the, the next step. So I think with that, we're, we're about 40 minutes in or so. Um, that's that's really a pretty good time to, to check on whether we've got any questions. So uh, Don, uh, do we have anything that, that's popped up from the from the audience here that, that Arvin and I yeah. can answer? Yeah, first, first thanks guys, that was, that was great. The, uh, the audience was, 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 was active there. They all kind of uh, jumped in with some great questions. Uh, and, and hard, hard to integrate in as you guys were, were going through. So we've got a good list of, of questions here um, where we're gonna jump into here in a second. As a reminder, please use the, uh, you know, the questions, the chat section there. Um, we'll uh, get to those um, as fast as we can and as many as we can here. Um, before we jump into the questions, I also wanna introduce another, another resource Cisco has brought on to the, uh, the, the call just to answer any of the, the deeper dive questions uh, Nathan Tran, Nathan, do you mind uh, maybe introducing yourself to the audience? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks, Don. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Nathan Tran, I'm a technical, uh, technical marketing engineer on the Cisco side. I've been uh, running point on the testing and collaboration from the Cisco side with this partnership. So uh, I'm, I'm quite familiar with the next Santa box and uh, familiar how um, the integration works. So I'd love to answer some questions related to the Great. And, and, and the environment. Great. Wonderful. All right, guys, I'm going to jump, jump into some of the questions. Uh, I'll read the questions, and maybe you guys can, can raise your hand in a sense of uh, who's, who's best to answer. So the first one 
uh, related performance. Uh, any performance comparison on delivering SMB from a standard Windows 2016 VM compared to a dual VM VSA setup? Um, yes. Uh, so um, uh, one of the um, one of the uh, one of the things that we established was to make sure that we uh, the performance are uh, um, well. First of all, we um, uh, first thing that we did was we wanted to uh, establish a single common workload so we can test uh, among um, other SMB solution. And one of the things that we, we we also established was to make sure that performance um, was well in line with the SMB um, Windows SMB VMs. And uh, I have to say that Xana performs uh, neck to neck with the Windows VM, so that's, that was a great thing that that, that we were able to observe. Yeah, we, we had a common baseline to compare them against, and uh, the uh, test results proved that they were almost identical. And uh, we think performance-wise, this will uh, this definitely matches up with the Windows Server uh, 2016 solution. So. Uh, I think a little little different twist on performance question um, here for, for you guys. Uh, since VSA uses VMDK, IO traverses through control VMs, right? Um, how is the performance as compared to file service provided by VM um, or RDM or direct attached VMDK? So I, I think, I, I, Nathan, you're going to hit that one? Yeah, unfortunately, that, that was not part of our use case. Uh, un, unless um, uh, Mikey have uh, uh, done any additional testing with those particular. Well, um, I, I think uh, the, the one key thing to point out on that is uh, you're not going to get file services directly from the VMDK. I mean, you have to put something on top of that to get true enterprise file services. I mean, if VMDK presents out to a VM, you, you're getting a block storage out of it. You're not going to get that, that file service capability. You need to have some layer on top of that. Uh, to present out the POSIX layer. Uh, so that's something that we've been doing for many, many years. And I think one of the, the benefits and what you guys saw in the performance we talked about a bit before is while, yes, when you put another layer on, it can introduce some overhead uh, because of the way that we work our file system, you actually get a good bit of performance bump because we do some caching with the memory included in that BSA uh, to be able to make sure that you don't aren't impacted by adding in that layer. Uh, so that's really why some of that performance comes into play. So good question, but I, I think at this point you, you've got to have something and we just make sure that we work around it to make sure that you get the best uh, performance possible out of it. Great guys. I'm going to move a little bit to scalability. Uh, what is the scalability of this product in terms of nodes as well as fabric? Uh, so with respect to uh, Hyperflex, right? So we support uh, uh, 64 uh, node uh, cluster for uh, ESX and out of this uh, 32 nodes uh, can be converged and 32 nodes are uh, compute nodes and uh, with uh, I think the second what was the second part of the question Tom? Um, sorry I lost it here um, yeah, sorry I don't, I don't have that second piece here anymore I apologize yeah, I think it was primarily around kind of what kind of scale yeah. and if, if there's any real yeah. limitations on it. Um, on the fabric so side of things, I apologize. On the fabric yeah, side, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on the fabric side, so Hyperflex has, uh, I mean, uh, two fabric interconnects that it works with. So the fabric interconnect has a unique uh, advantage wherein you don't uh, burn up ports on your top of track switch. So say you have a, a top of track switch so your fabric interconnects need uh, two ports each, so four ports on your top of track switch. But then with other hyperconverged windows where they don't have a fabric interconnect, you're going to use uh, two ports for every node. So say if you have uh, a 32 node uh, cluster for anybody else, you're going to use up uh, 64 ports on your top of track switch. But then with uh, Hyperflex, it's even for like a 32 node or a 64 node cluster, it's still going to be only four ports on your top of track switch. So I would say with respect to scaling, we definitely have an edge with the way that we use uh, fabric techniques. And I think even if I, I jump in on the on the next center side on that, um, being able to do those VSAs, we really don't have a, a limit. We don't impose any artificial limits. So uh, you can scale up into the, the multi-petabyte range uh, if you wanted to. 
Uh, you can also run multiple VSAs with that single management console. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility on how you want to do it. And the scale doesn't get impacted. We don't have a, a limitation on the backend fabric we're running across the virtual switching. So really get the performance there. So you're going to get the performance and the capacity capacity out of whatever you can on the Hyperflex. Uh, and we'll just grow with that. Thanks, guys. So um, a couple of mixed center questions. Um, Mike, I think this may be just be a more of a clarification um, for, for this individual. Um, the extent is for objects, uh, but I would combine it with file. Um, so I think there's maybe just some, some base confusion. Maybe just touch on, on that a little bit uh, to clarify. Uh, yeah, so Nixenta Store itself is a unified uh, file and block platform. Um, it is for uh, NFS, uh, SMB, iSCSI fiber channel by itself. On this solution as the VSA, uh, it is designed to present out primarily on the file side of it. So it's NFS and SMB. Uh, today, you're not going to present out uh, an object platform out of the Nixenta store solution. Um, there is some, some roadmap type things um, with that type in mind. Um, but today, Nixenta store is really built around being a file block. Uh, and the Nixenta store VSA on the Hyperflex solution is really geared for that those NFS and SMB workloads uh, that you need file presentation. Um, object is another conversation. We'd be happy to have afterwards about some, some other potential solutions around it. Great, thank you. Um, qu question around, uh, you know, is this is this ZFS based? And maybe Mike, you can talk a little about the, the support and and engineering we put into that um, uh, for for this question. Yeah. So the Nexenta store itself, as many are aware, uh, is uh, based on OpenZFS. Uh, we've since 2008 we've been utilizing it, and we've actually uh, developed multiple different things and actually are pretty active in giving back to the OpenZFS community as well. Um, we believe that ZFS is probably the best file system out there for uh, things like NFS and SMB workloads uh, that really gives you the most robust capability, the best performance, the best things like caching capabilities, uh, as well as the extras of snapshot and cloning. And we continue to make improvements into that uh, workload and into that that project, um, it is based on that. However, we do obviously put some wrappers around that uh, that are more of a, a proprietary to be able to give uh, the best performance out of the VS, the Nexenta Store VSA, whether that's around the management stack is a big piece of that. Um, being able to manage that easily through the CLI, through the, the API, through our, our UI with Nexenta Fusion or, or through the vCenter plugin, all of those pieces are really added onto that. So. In the, the bottom core layer of it, it, it is OpenZFS based, uh, but we've added a lot to that to make the manageability of it uh, much easier and gets away from the issue of you've got an administrator that they are the only one that knows how to do it because they are a, a hardcore former uh, ZFS or Solaris or, or deep dive into the kernel kind of guy. Now you can do this as a true enterprise platform that you can have a team that can work on and that guy that you still just have to manage that can now actually go and take a vacation and not have to worry about it. And you can have the rest of your team management. So I think a lot of that is really what's added to it and built around it. Great, thanks, Mike. Um, guys, a, a, a question, I think a more of a clarification question around replication. Um, you know, at the file level um, versus the, the VM level. Uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here a little bit, but, but maybe you guys can talk a little bit about that in the VDI use case, right? That we're we're kind of touching on here, and um, how how we kind of see that, and um, maybe maybe touch on um, best practices if you don't mind. Yep, uh, uh, sure. So uh, with respect to Hyperflex, uh, we do uh, provide uh, I would say replication and snapshots at the uh, VM level, right? And that's a solution that uh, customers use with respect to our ability to take uh, instant snapshots and instant clones. And uh, typically we have a DR solution that's built on top of that too, wherein uh, you can have a replication for, a synchronous replication for your VMs and uh, you can replicate them to another uh, Hyperflex uh, cluster too. So, and uh, at the, uh, I think at the file system, at the file level, uh, for this particular uh, solution, as uh, Mike uh, talked about earlier, the ability to have uh, the uh, file level 
uh, snapshots wherein uh, you can provide self uh, service functionality to the users, right? So with respect to uh, the integration with Windows that Nexenta has, uh, a particular user can just say right click on a file and then go to a previous version of that file, right? So that simplicity is enabled by the, um, I, I would say, the file level uh, technology that uh, Nexenta has provided. So. Mike, any other comments or? No, I think Arvin actually That's hit good. that real well. There. I mean, <laughs> That's I, good. The, the, he managed to get both of us in there, so I don't even have to say too much. I like when that happens. You can tell we've been working on this for a while. <laughs> yes, yes. Very good. All right, guys, I've got, I've got a um, more scenario-based question here. It's, it's uh, um, a, a little bit of a long one, so, so hang in there with me. Um, can you touch on a scenario where there is a single HX cluster um, and a uh, S3260 for backup. Uh, a scenario is a budget-restricted customer who cannot afford a primary and secondary HX cluster, um, but their preferred HX as a primary and a backup platform for secondary. Um, can Nexenta be used in this scenario to replicate specific VMs uh, from the HX to the 36, uh, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the S3260 and provide file services? So, um, I mean, I, I can probably uh, take that. So with uh, respect to this particular solution, right? Uh, this is, I mean, with this solution, we have validated, I would say, SIFS SMB shares uh, running on, I mean, provided using Next Center running on Hyperflex, right? But then for other types of solutions, we are actually trying to figure out what are the use cases for that and what are typical customer deployments for that. So if there is a particular, uh, like I would say a need or a customer need for this, I think we should definitely explore it and then we can come up with uh, some kind of a uh, proof of concept or do some validation on it. And then we can present it as a holistic solution to the customer after that. So I would say reach out uh, to the uh, sales team uh, and then uh, we can work with you on tailoring a solution for this particular use case. Yeah, I think what I would add to that is we do have the ability, this this VSA, if you're running, if that S3260 is running uh, VMware on the head nodes within it, um, the capability is there to run the next center store VSA on it as well. Um, so you could replicate the files, but like, like Arvin said, we built this around the file base. So normally if you had a, a hyperflex you would utilize the hyperflex replication for the vm replication to another hyperflex uh cluster so uh, as arvin said i think that's it's an interesting environment and one that i think would be worth kind of digging into a bit more so there is some capability on the file side to replicate obviously anything on the next census store we could replicate off but we need to make sure it's the right fit for the customer very good all right guys uh that that covered most of the, the questions that, that we received from the audience. Um, I guess any, any kind of closing remarks? I'll, I'll maybe first turn it over to Nathan. Anything final on your side that you uh, would like to touch on? Um, well, you know, I, I I like an opportunity to share the, you know, some of the, the, uh, the experience I had when I uh, uh, first initially um, uh, deploy the next center on, on the hybrid um, uh, flex platform just like Mike mentioned earlier it's a, it's a, it's a very easy uh, uh, process I was, uh, a lot of the information is already available on the blog so it's a it was a very simple uh, instructions couple of steps and you can have it running in a matter of, of uh, a few minutes so you know like it really iterate the, the installation the deployment process uh, a lot of the best practice is already built into the actual OVA ready so uh, it was uh, pretty much a plug and place uh, uh, solution. So, uh, you know, want to be able to uh, share that to the audience. Besides that, um, the, uh, you know, like I said earlier, the performance is very well um, uh, respected. I think, you know, one of the things that, that we, we want to make sure was to find the best of the breed in terms of performance and, and uh, optimization that's uh, for HyperFlex, and we found that in the next center. So, um, you know, pretty excited about this. Uh, this uh, uh, solution being able to uh, have flex being able to support that. So that was my uh, well, my, that's my uh, closing remark. Appreciate that, Nathan. Aravind, any 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 closing remarks? 
Oh, yes, I think, uh, Nathan, thanks for touching upon the uh, testing of the validation and the efforts that we have put towards this. And uh, I, I would say this particular solution has been validated for uh, the uh, SIFS SMB shares uh, for VDA Home Directory's use case. And we would like to, I would uh, start uh, some uh, proof of concepts or start engaging with uh, customers uh, on this and uh, try to see where we can help with this particular uh, solution too. So I would say if you have customers interested in this, do reach out to us and uh, we can sit down, sit down with them and try to walk them over the benefits of the solution. So. Great, thanks Kevin. Mike. Uh, I think uh, you guys hit a, a great point. I think as I got to work with this a bit, obviously the Hyperflex is, is really helping to lead the way in some of the hyper-converged uh, technologies out in the, the market today. And I think this integration really just gives it that next level of the extra piece of it. Uh, and knowing, as Nathan pointed out, the simplicity to get it up and running, uh, I'm looking forward to talking to uh, those who have been on the webinar or those who are watching this afterwards to kind of what, where, do you, where do you see it using? And uh, I think that it's a really easy, simple solution that, that's rather elegant and, and gives a, a good capability and some good performance for the end users. So. Nathan, Ervin, Mike, thank you again for, for your time and, and pulling this together. Uh, thank you to the audience. Uh, really, really good interactive discussion. Um, great, great to see everybody kind of hung in there uh, from the beginning to the end all the way through. So uh, thank you for taking your time. As, as mentioned in the kickoff, um, we have recorded this. You will be getting an email from us in the next 24 hours, and we'll be following up. If, though, you have any immediate further questions or, or would like to learn a little bit more, I, I brought back the, you know, the, the email addresses and, and the website there um, that you can get some, some information. So appreciate your time. Have a great rest of your day, and, and take care. Bye-bye.